Well, happy Resurrection Day. Y'all doing all right? I don't know how to say it any better than I'm about to say it, but I am excited to speak today. Easter is one of the funnest days of the year, and um, I love it. You can tell I love it. I wore a suit today. Would you stand up with me as we honor God's Word? I've started this series. This will be the third part of the series called God Wants You Well. Would you say it with me? Let's change the word you and put in me. Say, say it with me. One, two, three. God wants me well. I believe that, church. That's not just preacher talk. That's Bible. I believe that it is God's will for us to walk in wholeness, in our mind, in our body, in our emotions, in our spirit. And I'm going to, I, I, I just think this is one of the, you know, I've preached many, 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 many Easter services. And there's nothing new to preach on Easter. Raise your hand if you understand that. There's no new idea. Jesus died, buried, resurrected. But what is new and what is fresh to a lot of people is that God, in His sacrifice, for your sin, for your sickness, and for your death, it's real. It's not something for yesterday. It's not something for the future. It's for something right now that God wants to do in your life. And I want you to listen. I just feel a, an anointing here today that people want to hear what the Word of God says, what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to you about your health, mentally and emotionally and physically, and all the things that God wants to do for you. So as we stand together, we're going to read three verses of Scripture, beginning with 1 Peter 2.24. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross, so that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. For by his wounds or by his stripes you were healed. Past tense, already been done, already taken care of. Somebody say amen. Amen. Isaiah 53, 3, he was despised and forsaken of men, a man of sorrows, acquainted with grief. And like one from whom men hid their face, he was despised and we did not esteem him. Jesus was completely, totally acquainted with rejection. Every one of us in this room, me included, we've experienced hurt, pain, and rejection in our lives. I will never forget being a youth pastor some 25 years ago, teaching on friendships. And I wanted to hear from young people. I wanted to know, what was resi- re- rejection like to you? What does it mean to you? And I'll never forget, a sophomore in high school, she wrote this. She said, to me, rejection is like sliding down a razor blade into a bowl of alcohol. I've never forgotten that picture. And there are some of you listening to the sound of my voice, both in this room and online. You have been sliced and diced and cut up by rejection. And I'm here to tell you that when Jesus died on the cross, he died that you could be healed of that. That inner pain and that inner hurt. And you need to be ready to receive that healing today. Surely our griefs, and he himself bore our sorrows. He carried, yet we ourselves esteemed him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was pierced through for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities, and the chastening of our well-being, or the chastening of our peace, fell upon him. And by his scourging, we are healed. It was done. First Peter said it's already been done. And then in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, and verse 20, Paul made this observation. But in fact, look at your neighbor and say, it's a fact. Christ has been raised from the dead, and he is the first of a great harvest of all who have died. You have loved ones, you have friends, you have family members that have died. You know they were Christ followers. You know they were believers. You know what? You're going to see them again. Jesus is the first fruits of that. Father, I thank you for your word today. I thank you for the blessing that I sense in this room right now. The blessing of your presence. The blessing of a hearing ear. That it's not just going to go into their heads and be filed away as another Easter sermon that they put in the knowledge bank, in a database. But Lord, it's going to go from their head into their heart and become life and become reality to them. And Lord, I promise that I will give you all the glory and all the honor and all the praise for what you're going to do as a result of the spoken word. You're the vine and I'm the branch, Lord. I've got to stay connected to you. For without you, Lord, I can do nothing. 
And Father, I believe that I can speak your word with authority and clarity today so that the hearers of your word can be changed and transformed in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, Amen. you can be seated. One of the greatest books I've ever read on healing other than the Bible is a book written by F.F. F. Bosworth. And he had this quote. And by the way, on the back of your bulletin is the sermon outline if you want to take notes and follow along with me. F.F. F. Bosworth said this, when you want what God wants for the same reasons God wants it, you're unstoppable. Man, what a great quote. And you know what? I believe that, and I'm going to show you today in no uncertain terms, and, and matter of fact, in minimal terms, because there's so much scriptural content that it, in the time allowed to me, there's no way that I could cover it. That from the Old Testament to the New Testament, from Genesis to Revelation, God's plan for you to be healed and whole is there. It's for you today. It's not for the preacher, it's not for the evangelist, it's not for somebody else that you've heard their story. It's for you. You need to be ready to be claiming it. And it's divine. It operates by faith. It's, it's like the light switches in this building. You know, I, there's, a, there's power behind the walls. I get that. There's electricity there. But your faith is, what, is when you reach over and you hit the light switch and the lights come on. It's, it's, the, the light switch is not what caused the lights to come on. It's the power. It's divine healing. It's divine health. It's not faith healing. It's not a, a, a faith ministry. Yes, and I understand faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. I understand Hebrews eleven six that it's impossible to please God without faith. Yes, I understand that faith operating through you and connecting you to divine power brings health and wholeness to your mind, to your body, to your emotions, and to your life. But it comes from God. Amen. So in this series of lessons that we've been teaching, our goal is going to be the last few weeks and continuing forward is where did sin and sickness come from? Did we see healing in the Old and New Testaments? The answer is yes. I'm going to show you that in depth today. Does Jesus expect us, Christ followers, to pray for the sick? What are the ways that we receive healing from God? What about doctors and medicine and my health connected to my faith? So last week we described to you very clearly, and if you want to listen to it, you can get on YouTube and you can just listen to the sermon. There's no worship, there's no fanfare, it's just a message at Generations Lubbock. You can look that up on YouTube and subscribe and like if you enjoy it. Or you can get back on Facebook and see the entire service there. But I described to you how that Satan is the originator of sin, sickness, and death. It all started in the Garden of Eden. It all started with the fall. It all started with Adam and Eve deciding that they were going to rebel and disobey God's word and partake of forbidden fruit. And at that moment, at that moment of rebellion, sin, sickness, and death entered the world. And it's been there ever since until Jesus died on the cross. And you're going to see that so clearly how the fact that God wants you well fits right into Easter Sunday. You're going to see it very clearly today. The second thing that I want to start, uh, finish teaching today, I just barely got started last week, is that in the Old Testament, Je Jehovah healed the sick, and in the New Testament, Jesus healed the sick. God has never changed from the Old Testament to the New. He still, pardon me, I'm talking so fast, my throat is dry. He is still doing miracles today. We looked at this verse in Exodus chapter 15, in verse 26. He said, if you will give earnest heed to the voice of the Lord your God and do what is right in his sight and give ear to his commandments and keep all his statutes, I will put none of these diseases on you, which I have put on the Egyptians, for I, the Lord, am your healer. Now, I want you to make a connection with me, and I'm going to ask you to make this connection several times today. The connection between obedience, in other words, if you're disobedient, it's sin. Here, he's talking about if you're obedient, if you follow his commands, if you live right, be right, do right, and think right, and if you can't live right, be right, do right, and think right, at least you know that in this day and age, you can ask Jesus to forgive you. Amen. Now, in the Old Testament, they didn't have that. What they had was a covenant. Everybody say covenant. It's not a contract. A covenant is something between God and man. This ring right here. See my wedding ring right here? July the 15th, 1978, Connie and I got married. And we exchanged wedding rings. This is an external evidence of an internal covenant that I made. 
And two became one, and God is the other part of that covenant. This is just an external evidence of it. You know what the external evidence of God's covenant is in this world today? Salvation, healing, and wholeness. And it's demonstrated by the names of God in the Old in the New Testament. There's miracles that take place. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. There's miracles of salvation. There's miracles of healing. There's miracle after miracle after miracle. And many of us experienced it. In the Old Testament, all they had was a covenant promise from God. And what we saw last week is that there are seven names, eight actually, Jehovah said, Canoe, the Lord is my righteousness. Jehovah Makedesh, the Lord who sanctifies. Jehovah Shammah, the one who is there. Jehovah Shalom, the Lord our peace. Jehovah Jireh, the Lord our provider. Jehovah Nisi, the Lord our banner. Jehovah Rohi, the Lord my shepherd. And then Jehovah Rapha, if the media team will help me and go back to Exodus 15, where it says the Lord is my healer, that is Jehovah Rapha, the Lord my healer. The covenant name of God that I will be your healer. Now, if we go to this next slide that we looked at already once, if we believe he's our righteousness, if we believe he's our sanctifier, if we believe he's our banner, our victory, if we believe that he's Jehovah Jireh, my, y'all, I won't sing for y'all. My son's back there laughing at me because he knows I can't sing. As well, you do too. But how many of you remember that song? And we believe that stuff. We claim those promises. Let me tell you something. If he's Jehovah Jireh, if he's the Lord, Jehovah Rohi, the Lord my shepherd, if he's all of those things, guess what? He is still Jehovah Rapha. He's still doing miracles today. He hasn't changed. These aren't just some cool Hebrew names that we can sing songs with. They are covenants. They are promises that God has made to us. And under the old covenant, healing was available just like it is under the new covenant. Fasten your seatbelt. You're going to learn some things today. I promise you. Psalm 103 says this. Bless the Lord, O my soul. And all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget none of his benefits, who pardons all our iniquities and heals all of our diseases. There it is again, a connection to forgiveness of sin and healing our diseases. There's a connection, folks. It's an undeniable fact. Psalms 107 and verse 20. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. And here it gets really cool. You have to pardon me for going into Leviticus. I know Leviticus is a very difficult book to read in the Bible. I I am a pastor, and when I read it, when I hit it in my devotions, I'm going, oh, I'm about to nod off. It's repetitive. A lot of it doesn't have anything to do with what we're doing today. But I want you to look at these verses because you're going to see something like I saw and, and you've got to understand, I've been doing this for 44 years, and I am still learning. I saw this this week in my studies, and I just went, wow. Everybody look at your neighbor and say, wow. <laughs> Leviticus 14 and verse 15. The priest shall take some of the log of oil. That's just a jar of oil is all it is. And pour it into his left palm. So here it is. I'm going to pour some oil into my left palm. The priest shall then dip his right hand finger into the oil that is in his left palm and with this finger sprinkle some of the oil seven times before the Lord. So it's obvious that they're in an altar situation. And he goes, da, 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 that's three, that's four, that's five, that's six. Okay, he does it seven times. And then it says, of the remaining oil which is in his palm, the priest shall put some on the right ear lobe of the one to be cleansed. Now, I need to stop right here and tell you that the context of this is a leper who is sick. It's a skin disease. I talked about it two weeks ago when the ten lepers were healed by Jesus in Luke chapter 17. Leprosy is a nerve disorder that it kills the nerves at the uh, edge of your skin and your skin dies. And it shrivels up or it falls off when it's, it, it just goes away. And I've actually been to a leper colony in India and seen those things. It's very, it's, it's very unnerving to see it. But here's the thing. This is, a, this is the Old Testament provision for the healing of a leper. 
And it says, again, in verse 17, of the remaining oil which is in his palm, the priest shall put some of the right ear on the right ear lobe of the one to be cleansed, some on the right thumb of his right hand, and on the big toe of his right foot, on the blood of the guilt offering. Now, listen, here's the thing. I know this sounds weird. Oil on the right ear lobe, right thumb, right foot. Stay with me. Verse 18, while the rest of the oil that is in the priest's palm of his left hand, he shall put on the head of the one to be cleansed, the person with the leprosy. So the priest shall make an atonement on his behalf before the Lord. Everybody say this with me. Say, at one mint. At one mint. Atonement is what Jesus did on the cross. He made an atonement for my sin and your sin. He paid a price for it. To be dealt with. Now, in the Old Testament, the priest made atonement over and over and over. They killed killed bulls and goats and turtle doves, and they spread all the blood on the altar. I would not have wanted wanted to be a preacher in the Old Testament. Because my job would have been very bloody. Thank goodness Jesus died on the cross once. One atonement. One time to make us at one with him. But here it is, the, the, so the priest shall make atonement on his behalf. But do you understand that here's the connection again for us? Atonement for sin and healing in the same place. The priest shall next offer the sin offering, here he goes, and make atonement for the one to be cleansed. In other words, so that the one who's got leprosy can be cleansed from his uncleanness. Then afterward he shall slaughter the burnt offering, the bull. The priest shall offer up the burnt offering and grain offering on the altar. Thus the priest shall make atonement for him, and he will be clean, healed. Now that's the Old Testament version. Track with me into the New Testament in James chapter 5. See if you catch the similarities here. Is anyone among you sick that he must call for the elders of the church that they are to pray over him, anointing him with oil? In the name of the Lord, and the prayer offered in faith will restore. If you're writing notes, circle the word restore. Write it down in your notes. Or if you've got your Bible there and you mark in your Bible, circle it, highlight it. The prayer offered in faith will restore the one who is sick, and the Lord will raise him up. And if he has committed, here it is, if he has committed sins, they will be forgiven him. There's that connection again. Healing and forgiveness of sin. Therefore, confess your sins one to another and pray for one another so that you may be healed. The effective prayer of a righteous man can accomplish much. Can you just, maybe just stop writing for just one second and just listen. Online friends, just look, look at me. Maybe you want to, maybe you want to comment within the building. We, we would love for you to get on our Facebook live feed and comment to us online or in the room. Let us know what you're thinking. Tell me, amen, pastor, you finally wore a suit. Something. We used to have a member that used to tell me, people will listen to you better when, you know, he was a doctor and he would say, the re- have you ever known a doctor that doesn't wear a coat? People listen, they listen to people that wear coats. I laughed. He was trying to get me to wear a suit every Sunday. Finally, I started wearing coats, but didn't wear a tie. James chapter 5, lay hands on the sick, anoint them with oil, and they will be restored. I'm just putting all of you on notice online and in the building. I'm letting the, putting the spirit world on notice. I'm tired of cowering down to not praying for people. These altars are open. We're gonna, we've been doing it for two weeks, and we're going to keep doing it. We're going to lay hands on the sick. We're going to anoint people with oil, not because there's anything special in the oil. It's divine. Remember what I said earlier. I laid a foundation for what I'm saying down. It's just the Bible method. It's symbols. It's a symbolism of the anointing of the Holy Spirit. But when you lay hands on the sick, when you lay hands on the sick and you anoint them with oil, there are undeniable miracles that take place. And we've got to get back to the Bible methodology of praying for people. When we went and replenished our supply of self-contained 
communion elements this week, I instructed the person doing the purchasing, buy some anointing oil so we can be ready. Because I'm getting ready to see God begin to do great things because we do it the way the Bible instructed us to. So not only was there healing in the Old Testament that looked a lot like what is, we're instructed to do in the New Testament, here's the second thing I want you to notice today. Jesus proved while he was on the earth that it was God's will for us to be in health. How did he prove that? Well, look at, with me at Luke chapter 4 and verse 40. And these, my friends, I could probably, if, if, you, if I didn't think you would get up and walk out the door, I could probably read you scriptures for an hour just like this out of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Listen to this. While the sun was setting, all those who had any, any, everybody say any. any. That's anybody who were sick with various diseases brought them to him and laying his hands on each one of them, he was healing them. Wow. Look at Matthew chapter 12 and verse 15. And Jesus, aware of this, withdrew from there. Many followed him and he healed them all. He didn't heal some of them. He healed them all. He didn't leave anybody untouched. Look at Acts 10, 38. You know of Jesus of Nazareth, how God anointed him with the Holy Spirit and with power, and how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. I've got news for you, church. Jesus has not changed. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He was doing miracles back then. He's going to be doing them today, and he's going to be doing them tomorrow. It's just a matter of whether you and I want to engage and receive that stuff from him on Resurrection Sunday and any Sunday after that because he's alive and well and sitting next to the Father praying for you, praying for me, interceding for us, believing that the Spirit will break out and heaven will come down and we will begin to see the Spirit of God Move among us like we did in day, like they did in days of old. There's no reason why we can't have a revival and a moving of God's Spirit where there's people that can't walk, can walk. People that can't hear, can hear. People that can't see, can see. Where cancers fall off and, and growths leave and supernatural things happen because the Spirit of God breaks out. Heaven comes down to earth and we recognize it. That's not just a song we sing. It should be something that we experience. I want it. Do you want it? Or do you not want it because you don't want God to get that engaged in your life? Do you don't want God to mess with your fears? You don't want God to mess with your sin because there's an undeniable connection to divine healing and God messing with your sins. There is a divine connection to God playing with, your, with the things that we're playing with and He wants us to lay them down. To walk in the light, not walk in the darkness. No, we want to pet our sin. We want to pet our anger and our unforgiveness and keep it hidden. We want to pet our addiction to porn. We want to hang on to, to sexual sin. Lying and cheating. Well, it's just the way the world is. i got to do business that way or I won't have any business. I don't believe that. I don't believe that. I believe that God will honor doing things His way, but there is a divine connection to why we haven't seen the Spirit break out like we sang about today, because we haven't seen heaven come down to earth yet, because people are not willing to leave their stuff at the altar. Get rid of your junk. Get rid of the stuff. Get rid of the stuff that's hidden down in your heart. That's why I spoke about the, the rejection. Get rid of the, they owe me. They hurt me. They, I want them to die. Somebody's saying that in your heart. That kind of hurt. I know what, I'm not, de, listen to, look at me. I'm not denying that somebody hurt you. I'm not denying that they rejected you. I'm not denying that they abused you. I'm not denying any of that fact. But I'm telling you right now, Jesus was acquainted with grief. He was acquainted with sorrow. He was acquainted with the kind of rejection that said he was stri stricken and smitten of God. He was being punished for, by God. That's what they thought. He was acquainted with that. 
Listen, I believe just the opposite. People say, some preachers say today, don't preach like that. Don't preach about sin. Nobody will come to your church. I absolutely disagree with that. People want, there are, there are those of you sitting here and listening to me online. You want to be free. You're tired of carrying that baggage around. You need to leave it at the altar so you can experience supernatural freedom. Yeah. Healing in your mind. Healing in your emotions. And guess what? It's connected to healing in your body. There is a divine connection. It's like John said about Jesus, for this purpose was the Son of God manifest, was to destroy the works of the devil. And I want the Spirit to break out, and I want the Spirit of God to destroy the pet things that you and I are hanging on to in our lives, the thought patterns that are hurting us. We need to be renewed in our mind. We don't... Paul said it this way, don't be conformed to the world, but be transformed, be changed, be renewed by the renewing of your mind. Quit conforming to the world. Change the way you think. Some of you are thinking God wants you to be sick. Why did Jesus die on the cross? Why did he carry your griefs, your sorrows, and your sickness? Why did he take a, nail all that stuff to the cross if God wants you to be sick to bring glory to his name? Sickness does not bring glory to God. Your healing, your health, and your wholeness will bring glory to God. Your right living and right life. For this purpose did Jesus come to destroy the works of the devil. And he never changes. You say, well, pastor, you're preaching about Jesus walking on the earth. Well, listen, the same Holy Spirit. Jesus said, I'm going away, and I'm going to send you the power of the Spirit. It's greater things than these things will you do. How will we do greater things? Because the Holy Spirit is in us. We're going to take care of spirits of darkness and spirits of infirmity. And cancers are going to die. And he, diabetes, healings are going to be done. Where doctors testify to the fact that there's a miracle. I can't explain this. I can't. I prayed. I asked Jesus. You say, preacher, would you tell me to quit taking my medicine? No, I would tell you to go to the doctor and let the doctor tell you, you don't need your medicine anymore because it's not there. Come on, church. Spirit, break out. Heaven, come down. Spirit, break out. Heaven, come down. Luke chapter 7 and verse 50. Such an interesting short verse. He said to the woman, your faith has saved you. Go in peace. Who was this woman? I preached about her. About three weeks ago, she was the woman that poured per, very expensive perfume. It was a, a perfume that was a year's salary. And he poured, she poured it on the feet of Jesus. And then it says, and there in Luke 7, you can go back and read the whole story. It says that she wiped Jesus' feet clean with tears and her hair. And the Pharisees and the religious people got mad and said, even the disciples got upset and said, we could have we spent this money, this, we could have sold this and given to the poor. And Jesus said, the poor you'll always have with you. You won't have me with you always. In other words, he was saying it wasn't wasted. In Luke 7, though, Peter is actually, you know, big mouth Peter. I mean, remember that guy. He's questioning Jesus. Jesus says to Peter, tells him a little story about someone who owed a lot of money and somebody who owed a little, and they were both forgiven. And Jesus says, which one loved much? And he said, the one that was forgiven a lot. And the one that wasn't forgiven very much didn't love very much. And he said, this woman loves much because she's been forgiven much. And there's tons of conjecture. Was she a prostitute? Nobody really knows. We just know that Luke 7 tells, her, tells us she was a sinner. Again, out of bounds, off the rails. And there's some, some of us in this room are out of bounds and off the rails today. And Jesus wants to heal. He wants to restore. He wants to bring. And he says to this woman, he gets to the end of the story, and he says to her, your sins are forgiven. 
And everybody's going, what? Who is this that has power to forgive? Well, he's the son of God. But I love, I love, I love, I love this verse. Your faith, your faith has saved you. The word saved, you'll see it on the next slide right there, is the Greek word soedzo. It appears 109 times in the New Testament. And you're going to see in a minute, it was in James chapter 5 a while ago when I told you to circle restore. It's the same. This is not, go back to Luke 7, 50, please. In Luke chapter 7 and verse 50, this was not about healing. This was not about her body. This was not about her mind. This was not about her emotions. This was about her being saved from her sin. We can go to the story, and it's not going to be on the screen, so, so media team, don't try to find it, but we can go to the story in Mark chapter 5 where the woman with the issue of blood it says she fought within herself. If I can just touch the hem of his garment, I'll be healed. And it says that when Jesus felt power go out of him, he said to her, Woman, your faith has made you whole. Same word. Same word, So soedzo. Show that word up there. It's the same word as New Testament 4982 from, you can see, the uh, Bible Soft's New Strong's Dictionary. Thank God I don't have to read the big, thick books anymore. I can use my computer. But here's what I'm saying to you. Being saved from your sin is the same thing of being saved from your sickness. It's the same Greek word. It gets translated in the King James Bible. Heal, preserve, save, do well, make whole, make well. When you get saved from your sin, you get saved from your sickness. There's no reason for us as followers of Jesus to stay sick. Wrap your brain around this, church. This is Bible. This is not preacher talk. I'm defining words and reading Scripture to you that where this came to pass. Look at this with me. The message of Easter. Pastor Greg Laurie from California, Harvest Church, you may have heard of him, wrote this in a piece, and I read it this week, and I had to quote it. Jesus died on the cross and rose from the dead. The resurrection of Jesus was the death of death. The resurrection of Jesus says we can live beyond the grave. What was the purpose of Jesus dying? So that we would be redeemed from sin, sickness, and death. Go back one slide. This is the purpose of the cross, to get sin out of our lives, sickness out of our lives, and the fear of death out of our lives. That's why Jesus died, was buried, and resurrected. I did a very sweet, moving funeral yesterday. Justin Clinton, who's on our worship team, who's not here today, because his mother passed away suddenly. At 49 years old, way too early. I got to meet her mother yesterday, and she just looked at me with tears in her eyes and said, no mother should have to bury their daughter at 49. She was just weeping, but you know what? She wasn't weeping for sadness. She looked at me and she said, Pastor Ed, I know my daughter's in heaven. I know she loved Jesus. And as our church served them a meal in this room yesterday, there were tables and chairs, not like this. It was a totally different atmosphere in here yesterday. There was no fear that Angie died and they wouldn't get to see her again. Everybody at that funeral, saved or unsaved, and I preached Jesus, my friends. I gave an altar call and everything. I didn't ask people to come forward. I understand the... the, the um, etiquette but I preached Jesus like everybody said that's what Angie would have wanted you to do heaven's real my friends the death of death doesn't that sound funny to say but that's what Jesus did he killed death he destroyed death and by destroying death, he destroyed sin, and he destroyed sickness as well. And that's the connection I want you to see today. Is that when you received Jesus, not only did you make sure you're going to get to the other side. You know, 
There's many of you sitting here, and you have loved ones. My dad's in heaven. I, I, I think my dad's probably the godliest man I knew. I'll never forget going to Colorado when I, he died of a sudden heart attack, and I got a chance to sit in my dad's chair where he always got up every morning. It's where I became an early riser from was from my dad. He'd get up at 5, 5.30 in the morning. And he'd go down and he'd sit in his, his recliner and kick back. He'd go to sleep in that chair most at nights. <laughs> I think I resemble my dad in more ways than one. <laughs> but sitting beside his Barker lounger was his Bible. I'll never forget getting up early, early, getting my dad's Bible out, thumbing through it. I saw prayer list after prayer list after prayer list that he had jotted down on pieces of paper. I saw my name. I saw my wife's name. I saw his great-grandchildren, my children. Jeff, I saw your name. I saw all of my kids' names. I saw business people that he just did business with. And he, had, he said, I've shared my faith with so-and-so. I'm praying for them. I saw the section in there where my mom was diagnosed with cancer, cancer of her esophagus. And I saw where my dad had prayed prayers of healing for my mom. And my mom was healed. Amen. See, she's, she's been cancer-free for over 20 years now. God healed my mother. Supernaturally healed her. And what I'm saying, trying to say to you this morning, church, is that the same Jesus that 2,000 years ago died, buried, resurrected, sitting at the right end of the Father, and he did all those miracles while he was on earth. Scripture says in Hebrews 13, 8, he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He doesn't change. I'm hoping, my prayer as your pastor, my prayer as the speaker to your friends online, wherever you're at. We had a guy from India watching us in the last service. A pastor that sent me a message and said, will you come preach this in India? I mean, you know, I'm just liable to go. Listen. Christ followers who don't believe this stuff for whatever reason, if you just want to believe that he died for your sin, okay, he died for your sin. I want the full meal deal. I don't want to water this thing down where all I'm going to do is die someday and go to heaven. I want to know that God is still doing things in my life today. But I'm telling you, there's a relationship to people holding on to their sin and not receiving healing from their sickness. I've showed that relationship over and over today. Look at James chapter 5 one more time. I want to show it to you. I've read it to you already, but I want you to see it. Is anyone among you sick? Then he must call for the elders of the church, and they are to pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord, and the prayer offered in faith will restore. So edzo. Heal, save the sick. It's the same word as in Luke 7.50. It's the same word in Mark chapter 5 with the woman of issue of blood. Look at Luke 17.19. And he said to him, stand up and go. Your faith has made you well. That's, remember two weeks ago when I preached about the extra, extravagant worship and extraordinary faith? This is the leper that when he came back and he fell down at the feet of Jesus and gave him glory. And Jesus said, your faith has made you well. So edzo. It's the same word. And then you go over into Luke 18 in verse 42. And he, Jesus said to him, receive your sight. Your faith has made you well. Immediately he regained his sight and began to follow him. And when he said, your faith has made you well, so edzo. It's the same word. The same word for salvation. The same word for healing. The same word for, for casting out of a demon. It is healed, made well, whole. Put your fins, pins down. Close your Bibles. Online or in the room. And look right up here. I want the Spirit to break out. I want heaven to come down in this room. I want you to experience everything that heaven has for you. I don't know where you're at today. I don't know. I, 
I don't know if you're saved. I don't know if you're not saved. I don't know if you're saved but living in sin. I don't know if you're living in sin and not saved. I don't know if you're sick and not saved. I don't know if you're saved and sick. I don't care what your condition is. Jesus wants to meet you where you're at. Not this preacher, but Jesus. Jesus is in the room. The Bible says when we lift up the name of Jesus, all men, women, and children will be drawn to him. He's been lifted up in this place today. You can feel him moving as I've been speaking, and your faith has been stirred that you want to see your needs met in the name of Jesus. Healing and wholeness for your mind. Some of you are struggling. You're struggling with things going on in your mind, fears and anxieties and worries. I'm telling you right now, I'm getting all fired up. My mic's all messed up. That's not what I'm telling you right now. What I'm telling you right now is this, that Jesus wants to touch you. (laughs) The question is, do you want him to? Do you want to leave your stuff? Do you want to let it go? Pastor Connie was talking about people that need to be prayed for. John Cruz is looking at an amputation. Lisa Smith just recovered in the hospital. Zach and Elizabeth are not in church today because Elizabeth's cousin died at 22 years old suddenly. Jennifer McClellan and Joy Basham were online in the first service and let us know that they need healing and health and wholeness. I went to visit Perlene Welch in the hospital this week after she's had her hip replaced. She's been struggling with doctors are telling her lung issues and, and has stayed in the hospital quite a bit longer than she's supposed to. We're going to believe that these people are going to be touched today. What I'm believing is, is your name going to be added to that list? Are you going to be touched? Would you stand up on your feet with me as... Jared plays something soft on the keyboard. Maybe play that spirit breakout song again. I don't know. Because he's breaking out. And I'm going to be super simple. I'm not going to be technical or difficult. I want to be super simple. If you're in this room and it's sin, sickness, and death, that's the altar call today. If you have a fear of death, if there's sickness in your body, if you know there's sin in your life, am I going to put you on blast and, and... Put your story out for everybody to hear and know. No. But am I going to open this altar for you to respond and come and stand here and say, I need a touch from heaven? I am going to do that. And if you're online today, there's a link right there. You say, well, how did you find out about those people, Jennifer McClellan and Joy, that needed a touch from heaven? Because they typed it in. They were bold enough to say, I need a touch from heaven. Maybe you're online today and you need a touch from heaven. And you know what? There's no distance with God. We read the scripture, Psalms 107, 20 today. He sent his word and healed them. We can send his word to you right online today and you can be healed. There's no distance with God. Every head bowed and every eye closed. Nobody looking around in this room right now. Just a private moment between you and God. What a great day to come to know Jesus as your Savior, Easter Sunday, 2021. What a great day to mark the day that you got healed from sickness. What a great day to declare that fears and anxieties and worries, like the fear of death and other worries, that you left them at the altar. You left them at the altar. Every head bowed. Every eye closed. I'm going to count to three. And if there's a need in your life, and nobody's asked, nobody's going to put a mic in your face. If there's a need in your life, when I get to three, you just get out from where you're standing and come line up here at the front. Don't look around. Nobody's looking. Nobody cares. It's between you and Jesus today. You feel it. Your heart's beating a thousand miles an hour right now. It's time for you to come back to God. You're saved, but you've been living in sin. You're living in sin, but you're not saved. You're saved. You've been born again, but you have sickness in your body. 
you're not born again and you've got sickness in your body. Jesus will take you right where you're at today. One, two, three. Come on. Jared, just sing that song. Just sing it softly. Come on, don't hesitate. Don't wait. There's one. So There's another. Who else is going to come today? Who else is going to step out and come leave your junk at the altar? Who's going to come step out and say, I need healing in my body? Who else is going to come and say that my stuff, I don't want to carry it anymore? My anxieties and my fears. Come on, young people. Come on, old people. Come on, middle-aged people. It doesn't make any differences between you and God. What do you want to leave here today? Or what do you want to take home with you? Thank you, Jesus. I need a woman to come stand behind each one of these ladies. And it's not too late for you to come. Online, you just type in the feed. You say, this is what I'm believing for. There's another one that's come. Come on. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray for Jennifer and Joy. We speak healing over them and Perlene. Lord, we pray for Zach and Elizabeth to be comforted at the loss of this young relative. Lord, we pray for Lisa and her recovery, that she would be made whole. And Lord, we pray for John today, that Lord, he's ha- as he's had this diagnosis of this amputation, Lord, that you would be with him. Give his family wisdom. Lord, we pray for Ezra today. We speak healing over him in Seattle, that he will be made whole by the stripes of Jesus today. If you're standing behind one of these ladies at the front, I want you to just put your hand on their shoulder right now and begin to pray for them. I'll tell you what, make it even better. Just turn around and face them and tell them what you're believing God for. Just tell them what you're believing the Lord for. And there's a miracle. They're in agreement with you. Church, would you stretch your hand out toward this altar today? Thank you, Lord. Lord Jesus, we're praying that your spirit would break out in this place. That healings and deliverance. Jared, hold on just one second. The Lord's given me a picture, and I want to speak it out because I believe that you could be healed today. When I had that word about, that word picture that that teenager wrote me about rejection. The Lord's just adding to that right now, saying that there's someone here that's had so much rejection in your life. It's like a chain wrapped around your spine. And it goes in circles, round and round and round your spine. And there's, I have a mental image of the biggest padlock. And you've never been able to find the key to unlock your healing from that rejection. I'm telling you what unlocks it is Jesus rebuking the spirit of rejection in your life if that's you and you want healing today i want you to come up here right now i I, there's an anointing on me to pray for you just come on just just don't wait if that's you if if it's not but i i see that picture clearly in my mind do you have something connie and 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 why that person maybe is wanting to come Yes, I just believe that the Lord's wanting to set people free of fear, suicidal thoughts. Man, there's no reason to be ashamed. You know, when uh, Ed went to Bible school, I had so much fear that he practiced on me for two years. And (laughs) until I was set free. And there's just no reason to leave church today carrying fear being locked down by fear, being locked down by thoughts of suicide. Lord, today, I just pray, Lord, that you would set people free in their minds, in the name of Jesus, in their emotions today. Thank you, Lord. Just begin to give those things to the Lord. There's no reason to leave here with a bunch of stuff today. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we break shame off of our lives. Lord, we thank you for freedom from addictions, Lord, that are separating us from our relationship with you and others today. Lord, I thank you that there is freedom in the name of Jesus. Oh, Lord, we don't want your death to be in vain because we don't take advantage of what you have for us today, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Just take hold of what you need from Jesus today. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord.
you want freedom, you've got to engage your faith. Engage, engage your faith today. Thank you, Lord. Break our walls down. Mm -hmm. Spirit, break out. Heaven, come down. Every head bowed and every eye closed for just a moment. We've got to ask the most important question, and that is, do you know Jesus? If you're here today and you don't know the Lord, you don't want to go home without Him. My friend, you don't want to leave here without Jesus. My online friends, giving your life to Christ is the best decision you could do. I say giving your life to Jesus is more like a surrender. I say it this way. If you can lift your hands in victory and surrender. I've lifted my hands in victory and surrender in the same day. <laughs> wow. Lord God. Some of us need to lift our hands to surrender and say yes to Jesus so that the next day we can lift our hands in victory. So Father, I just let's all lift our hands up. You don't have to lift them like mine. Just put them out in front of you if you want to. And say this prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I surrender my life to you. Thank you for dying on the cross for me. Thank you for loving me that much. I invite you into my life to be my Lord and to be my Savior. I ask you to forgive me of my sin. I ask you to forgive me of my rebellion. And I want you to be in charge of my life. I've been in charge too long. I need your help. Now, Father, every person that prayed that prayer, Lord, the one that prayed that prayer for the first time in their life, the person that prayed it for the second or third or fourth time in their life, Lord, let them know that they're your child. Let them know that they know because they believed. They've become a child of God. Because they confessed with their mouth and believed with their heart. It's not a trick. I'm not trying to get you to join this church. That's a whole nother decision. What I, the reason I led you in that prayer, friends, online friends, friends in the room, is because I want you to join the family of God. I want you to know that God is your father and Jesus is your big brother who took your place. And the Holy Spirit is your helper. Amen? Amen. If you prayed that... Just one more time. Let's just help people. Just bow your head and close your eyes. If you prayed that prayer with me sincerely for the first time or you're coming back to the Lord, just lift your hand up. I'm looking across the room. There's one. There's two. Anybody else? Anybody else? There's another one. Online, you just touch the feed and say, I prayed that prayer for the first time or the third time or whatever. Wow. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand clap for what he's done. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Listen, church, you don't want to miss this. I'm going to keep preaching on healing. There's more material, more stuff to cover. I covered that in my introduction. Be back here next Sunday. It's going to be great. Just for a moment, would you sit down on your feet? On your sit down. <laughs> Y'all can tell I've been talking for a long time this morning. Sit down on your feet. No, please don't do that. That could hurt. Praise God. Man, 
Spirit, break out. Heaven, come down. Man, I'm excited about what the Lord's doing. It's the time in our service. We don't spend a lot of time doing this, but it's the time where we thank you for being a generous group of people. We're so grateful and so thankful that all through the 2020, the year of COVID-19, that Generations Church was taken care of by God's people, by you. And we're grateful for that. We're grateful that we were recently able to do the baptistry, an extra $3,500. I can't wait to baptize people next week. I've got a grandson that lives in California. His name's Bowden. And Connie and I were talking to him on the phone last night. And he's going to wait to get baptized until his daddy can baptize him in our baptistry in May. I'm so excited. It's going to be so fun. And uh, his dad's a preacher like me, my youngest son. And uh, just exciting times. But thank you for your generosity to help us in your giving. Proverbs eleven twenty five 25 says, The generous soul will be made rich. Proverbs chapter 3, 9 and 10 says, Honor the Lord with the first fruits of your increase, and then your barns and your vats will be filled. You know, we've got people that are tithers, and we've got people that give generous offerings over and above their tithe, and I'm just so grateful. And I just want to, you get, I've got, I do things the old-fashioned way. And I'm going to put this check in that brown box back there. There's an envelope around you if you want to use cash. Or if you want to digitally give, there's three ways up there on that screen. You can go to our website, generationslubbock.com forward slash donate. You can go to the text portal, 77977 is the number. And then you in the message type GC Lubbock. takes you to the same portal as the website. Or if you've downloaded our free app. It's free on the Apple Store or the Google Play Store. And there's so, can I just give a, I'm not Baptist, but I pre, pray and advertise. Is that okay? If you download the app, there's so many things on the app. The Bible's on the app. Calendar's on the app. Uh, an audio, audio copy of all of our messages is on there. Not the video like YouTube and Facebook. But um, the, there's all kinds of links to cool things and stuff that are on there but download the app and there's a give button and it all takes you to the same place and we're just grateful for all of you that are doing that get your device if you've already given or get your envelope or your check like me I want to pray over it Father I thank you for the generous souls in this room I pray the word of God over them that they will be made rich not by me but by God they're not giving to me they're giving to you oh God and Lord I thank you that we're going to get next Sunday we're going to see people baptized in that baptismal and I thank you for the people that generously are helping us make this happen and Lord I thank you that their seeds will come back 30, 60 and 100 fold and that Lord for the tither the devourer be rebuked and the windows of heaven be opened in Jesus name Amen Amen well stand up on your feet with me we're going to go out singing Miracles. We're going to go sing out singing about miracles, and then you're going to have a great Easter Sunday.
You're the God of miracles. The one who does impossible is reaching out to make me whole. Reaching out to make me whole. The one who put death in its ways His life is flowing through my veins His life is flowing through my veins I believe in you I believe in you You're the God of miracles I believe I believe in you, you're the God of miracles, I believe in you, I believe in you, I believe in you, you're the God of miracles. The power of the risen one The God who brings the dead to life You're the God of miracles You're the God of miracles The God who was in this to come The power The God who brings the dead to life, you're the God of miracles, you're the God of miracles, I believe in you, I believe in you, I believe in you, you're the God of miracles. today and forever. Lord, you're going to continue to do your word. You're going to perform your word. You sent your word and you healed them. Lord, we believe for the miracles that we've asked for today. And Lord, we believe that we're going to receive them not only today, but tomorrow. Because you're still on the throne. You're sitting next to the Father, making intercession for us. And Lord, because you died on the cross and were buried and were resurrected, you created what we now call the death of death in the name of Jesus. Amen. If you are a first time guest, we want to meet you in our welcome center. Please meet us over there. We have a gift to give you and we would love to get to know you. If you want to speak to me, I will be at the front door. We love you. Have a fantastic, blessed Resurrection Sunday. See you next Sunday.